Our guest today is the economist Jomo Kwame Sundaram. Jomo joins us from Malaysia. He was a former assistant secretary general of the United Nations for Economic Development. I'm going to ask him what he thinks the future of food security might look like in a post-COVID world. I think everybody agrees that there's no, it's very unlikely that we will return to business as usual. Uh, and obviously, uh, food security is one particular area which has tremendous ramifications uh, which will have to be rethought. The food security has uh, recently been under threat and there will be a return to the idea of uh, food self-sufficiency uh, and the equation of food, of food security with uh, food self-sufficiency. Countries are going to be concerned about trying to produce much more of their food uh, internally and, and, uh, to, and there will also be associated concerns uh, of trying to ensure that their populations are reasonably well fed. Although there has been a significant decline in official figures on poverty over the last uh, couple of decades, for instance, um, it is, uh, unfortunately, there has not been a corresponding uh, improvement uh, in food security. What do you think are the food safety concerns that we might be talking about in the future? When it comes to food safety, we find that uh, there has been uh, a very important trends um, uh, where we have seen uh, a, a tremendous uh, concern in certain quarters about the uh, development of genetically engineered uh, foods. Uh, I think the more serious problem is the fact that genetically engineered crops uh, often uh, undermine the viability of other uh, naturally uh, developed crops. There is also the concerns about uh, what is called AMR, antimicrobial resistance. And that is the fact that uh, increasingly uh, with uh, breeding of animals in captivity, uh, both uh, um, mammals, uh, ruminants, as well as, as fish, uh, we find the likelihood uh, of human uh, health being severely compromised. And of course, there's also the aspect of nutrition. On the one hand, uh, we have what is called hidden hunger. And hidden hunger refers to deficiencies in terms of vitamins, in terms of minerals, as well as other trace elements, which are very important for, the, for human development and for, for, for the human body. Um, and so we find that, that quite a number of ailments, of human ailments, of morbidities, are associated with uh, many of these uh, micronutrient deficiencies. The other uh, major problem with malnutrition, of course, has been the increase in what, you call, what are called diet-related non-communicable diseases. That's a bit of a mouthful, but it also includes, among other things, uh, for example, the huge increase in overweight and obesity. But besides that, there are a whole range of other diet-related, uh, food-related uh, uh, non-communicable communicable diseases uh, due to excessive uh, salt consumption and most importantly and dangerously probably excessive sugar consumption. So this, in my, in my view, would be some of the major issues to be concerned about as the world begins to think about what a post-COVID-19 uh, future is going to look like. As you look towards policy in a post-COVID world, what are your biggest fears? That we will focus very narrowly on traditional understandings of food security. And traditional understanding of food security really refers to whether or not people have enough calories, have enough carbohydrates. And that is, uh, would be most unfortunate. The singular focus on whether or not people have uh, enough calories uh, it, it has been the most unfortunate problem, uh, which we find uh, with, in developing countries, especially in the poorer developing countries. If a leader from a developing country called you and asked for advice, what would you what would you tell them? I would insist that any serious consideration of food security uh, would take in, into consideration questions of food safety, uh, the distribution of food, as well as questions of, of nutrition. Uh, it seems to me that these are all vital issues uh, which we have not paid enough attention to. The biggest problem in the world is not the inavailability of food. There is enough food to feed everybody. And, and with a bit of tweaking, we can generate enough healthy food for everybody. But 
the big problem, of course, is that, they, that, that um, problems of poverty and problems of inequality impinge on the question of food uh, availability, uh, especially for, for those who are, who are poor. So I would encourage uh, policymakers to think about this complex of issues. We need to broaden the discussion of food security in order for us to move forward.